catacombs. This is a tile set that I've wanted to create now for a long time. The trick is trying to capture that musty smell, the silence, and that eerie feel of this ominous setting in a set of tiles. I'm going to show you how to do it with this three-part series that starts right now on that, that starts right now on table on tabletop witchcraft. <laughs> Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're jumping into our first video of a three-part catacomb series that I've wanted to do now for a long time on the channel. I made use of the brand new Scattered Remains collection by Tiger Skull RPG, and I printed them off with my Anycubic Photon Mono X 6K. You can grab all those files down below in the description. I'll have a link to his site. And don't worry, if you don't have a 3D printer, he also offers a print-on-demand option as well. All right, also, don't forget to head on over to Firelight Fables Candles. I used the Land of Shadows candle for this craft to get me in the mood, and this is the perfect candle for this setting when you have your players sitting around the table. Enter TWC10 at checkout, gets you 10% off your entire order, and a small kickback comes to me and helps out the channel. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, we're gonna kick this video off with the Firelight Fables Candle Company Land of Shadow candle. The perfect scent for making this craft or for when you're using it on the game table. Now I'm a huge fan of the 6x6 tile. We're going to push all these together on the table, making the whole table playable. And in video 2 of this series, we'll place our walls that we're going to make on top of these, making them playable not only horizontally, but vertically as well. Now the secret and the cool thing in this video is the grid system. We're not actually going to score a grid into these tiles but we're gonna make the grid visible by using these little flagstone pavers. The secret is to kind of offset the stones so that you have a blank space roughly between maybe every other stone. When you step back and look at this, you're actually gonna see the grid system and be able to move your miniatures freely and easily over the entire tile. So watch when I move this clear plastic off you can see easily where a one inch miniature, if it's placed on the stone I'm cutting right there, I can move it one space forward into that blank space, one space to the right to where those two little stones are. It's a really cool and innovative way to have a more immersive tile that doesn't have a grid literally cut right into the surface. Now we want to have some texture for all these stones. You can see I'm just using the X-Acto knife to basically cut around the perimeter and then we're going to add a little depth to it by cutting the edges out at an angle. Alright, you're going to make a bunch of little pieces here. The shop vac, something I got to have right next to me at the table at all times. And then using my favorite texturing tool, you want to press around the perimeter of all these little stones. It's going to take a few minutes, but it's really going to make each stone pop out and look really cool once we're done. All right, make sure to texture the edges. I'm not gonna do too much to the side of these tiles. We're gonna have a lot of the detail right on the surface of them. I made this texturing tool as well. I'll put a link up above to my texturing, my rolling pin video. Uh, I basically talk about how to make that one in that video and it does come in handy from time to time. Now, we gotta have a little splash of color in these tiles. We're gonna do that by using some resin and adding a little bit of green dye to it. All I'm doing is trying to create a natural looking pool that would go around in between all of these little rocks. If you're enjoying this video and my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Okay, now when you do this part right here, you wanna make sure to rough it all up, that way it looks really cool and natural once we're done. But you wanna have that shop vac running because you're gonna make a ton of little pieces. And as you can see right there, it's a really cool thing to have to be able to quickly get rid of all the foam off of your clay sculpting tool. All right, I quickly made this jig to show me where I want my holes for all of my magnets. Just like in my cavern series, uh, I'm gonna have a bunch of magnets in these as well. You don't need a bunch on each side. One magnet is enough in the tile and one as well in the cave wall, which we'll have in the next video to hold them right in place real nice. And the cool thing is, with the texturing paste we're gonna make here in just a minute, you're never gonna see those magnets. 
All right, this is really cool, and it's really gonna be shown off like how awesome this stuff is in the next video with the catacomb walls. We're gonna add a lot more of my secret ingredient than I added here, and that secret ingredient is gonna be baking soda. All right, I didn't add a lot here because we rolled the tile with that roller earlier, and it's indented with little pieces of sand. If I add too much baking soda, you're not gonna see any of the texture that we placed in the tile. We wanna have a lot of that baking soda in the next video because we're gonna cover all our walls in this, and it's gonna add a really awesome cave look to the, uh, to the surface of them. And obviously I added a little pinch of sand as well to add some grit and pick up on some highlights once we paint these tiles. Now we added all of that to our Mod Podge base coat. And the cool thing is, we're not only getting a nice black base coat, but we're also adding texture to the craft at the same time. And you wanna make sure to add just a little extra over those magnets so you really can't see them once it cures. Those are the colors I'm gonna use. I did a lot of research online and a lot of the catacombs have this desert tan, maybe a little bit of a, a mustardy color, some green vibe to it. That's what I was going for. And I know right now, these tiles look extremely bright. And that's something you have to try and envision when you're making one of these crafts, how it's gonna look, not just when you're painting it, but if you're gonna add a wash, what that wash is gonna do to the paint color once you're done. All right, now once we have it all painted up, we're not gonna hit it up with a brown wash, we're gonna hit the whole tile up with a black wash. It's really gonna knock down how bright these tiles are and it was the perfect combination. Making sure to have plenty of wash on that brush when we paint over those stones because there is quite a bit of, I guess, depression in them and you'll be able to see pink in them if you don't. Now this is the sequential skull file also from Tiger Skull RPG. I had a ton of these left over from my Krampus build and I figured why not make use of them now? So I'm adding a bunch of these to the tile as well. I'll have a link in the description below to all the items I'm using as well if you want to pick up like the hot wire knife, these tweezers, anything like that. And these soft pastels are a great way to add pigment. I know a lot of people have been talking about this for some reason lately, but you know, I got tired of waiting for certain pigment powders to become available uh, online. A lot of them are really hard to get. So, you know, you're going to use these. You're going to use probably the browns, the tans, the black and green. There's a lot in here you might not use, like the fluorescent pinks and stuff, but they're not expensive and they do a really wonderful job. To lock these in place, once we're all brushed in, we're just gonna do a little spritz of some rubbing alcohol and they'll be all set. Okay, now this is the build plate for the Anycubic Photon Mono X 6K. You can see it's fully decked out with all the models from the Tiger Skull RPG, Scattered Remains Collection. If you want to pick these up, you can grab the STL file on his site, or you can get them to print on demand where you can order just the models from him as well. Now, I needed a ton of these. If you're gonna follow along in this series, you're gonna need a bunch too. And I printed probably for an entire day. I just kept printing off this entire set because when we make our catacomb walls, man, you're really gonna feel like you're in the catacombs. Here's a quick peek at what all those models look like. And, you know, I didn't show how to paint them up. I think you can figure out how to paint these yourself. You know, you can grab some Vallejo, bone white, you can grab, you know, any tan color. And honestly, this is part of the terrain. So I painted them up one color, I gave them an Agrax Earthshade brown wash, and then a quick highlight, and they're quick and easy and done and ready to go. If you want, you can come back with another little tan highlight, uh, dry brush over them, and they're all set. Now I love super clear. I'm just mixing this up with some of the, I think it was emerald green. And what you wanna do is paint some of this with a disposable brush over these little miniatures. It's going to, and the pool actually, the, the ponding area. It's gonna keep the area from bubbling up too much and it's gonna lock those pieces in place. Once that cures, you can pour a whole bunch of it over everything. Tease it with a toothpick to get it exactly where you want it. If you have too much, use a pipette to pull it out, and these are ready for the game table. All 
All right, so this tile set, I really wanted to have a different feel and look than any other tiles on my channel so far. And I think we accomplished that with this cool new grid system and the paint scheme. Notice that after we washed it, we didn't do a final dry brush to bring the colors back up. That's because I wanted to keep a nice dark gloomy feel to the tile, as well as adding that little bit of green resin, added that splash of color to just a few of the tiles that this set really needed. Now for our next video, we're going to make catacomb walls. And once you place these on the table, your players aren't going to think, yeah, I think we're in the catacombs. They are 100% going to know they are in a dark, gloomy, ominous setting, and it's definitely the catacombs. I promise you that. Don't forget, in the description below, Tiger Skull RPG, check out his Patreon and his website. Head on over to Firelight Fables Candles, grab a candle or two there to help support my channel as well as hitting that like button and subscribing, and also head on over to Patreon and check out my tiers there to help support it as well. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.